First, I just want to say hello and welcome, and I'm really honored and delighted to be here with Peter. And um, it really came, I think this, this time together came out of our personal inquiry into our own practice. And for me, my background has been for the past 15 years in Vipassana, more in the Theravadan tradition. And it's really supported me, and um, it's still a foundational part of my practice. But over the past five or six years or so, as I've also started to explore the non-dual traditions, what started arising for me was noticing how in my practice, I was using certain of my techniques um, to try to make things be a certain way, to try to get to certain states of consciousness, and that there was a subtle sense of striving kind of underneath a lot of my practice, trying to um, make things be a certain way, so even be a certain way so I could be peaceful or a certain way so I could be more generous or more compassionate. And there was always this sense that I, it's not quite right, or I'm not quite right, or there's some better place to be. And there was something extraordinarily liberating in just letting all that go. And bringing a, a certain acceptance, allowing kindness, curiosity, to my experience and a spaciousness. And so when we were talking about this non-dual vipassana, it still feels like I have the scaffolding of my mindfulness practice. And yet there's so much more freedom in it. And so that's, I think, what we're going to explore a little bit today. And I love the word curiosity, because I think the nice thing about curiosity is it's just open to seeing what is. It's not about trying to get anywhere or make anything happen. And I, I would say the non-dual aspect for me is, is the idea that, well not the idea, but just realizing there is nowhere we're trying to get to. There's nothing we're actually trying to do, nowhere we're trying to get to, but more. For me it's about just letting the mind relax and just relax back into being in the moment. And my own background, I got in, when I first got involved in meditation, I was very involved in TM, Transcendental Meditation. And what attracted me to it in the first place, I was reading the, one of the Maharishi's early books, and he said something about effortlessness and why meditation had to be absolutely effortless. He was saying any attempt to try any effort at all starts confining the mind, tightening it, and we want to do the opposite. And that just struck me as so obviously right. And yet everything I'd been trying in the way of meditation was concentrating. If you really discipline the mind and practice years of discipline, you can really hold off all thoughts and you will finally, with great, great effort, reach samadhi. And, it's like, and he was just turning the whole thing inside out and saying, no, 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 just let go, relax. And so I was involved with TM for many years. And then about 10 years ago started visiting Spirit Rock, just because I wanted a place to just go and retreat. I had no particular interest in Vipassana. I was interested in Buddhism, but just here was a place locally where I could go on retreat and just meditate, and there's no mind police there. You can do what you want. <laughs> and instantly, I just saw this marriage between... I, I came up instantly in my very first retreat. I, I think it was the first day. It's like, ah, transcendental Vipassana. <laughs> which was taking that complete effortlessness of TM and then applying it to mindfulness. And what I noticed is sometimes mindful, I, I sit with various mindfulness teachers, sometimes I think this is what Sean is pointing to, that that's very slight intention to arrive at a particular state to get somewhere. And I just thought, no, hang on, why don't we just let go of any any striving and just totally accepting what is in the moment. And over the years I've been just noticing, watching my own mind and just noticing where that little bit of striving, wanting comes in, that bit that says, oh this isn't quite it, 
this meditation isn't quite good enough. And just realize like, that's all just part of what is. So when the striving comes in, for me it's accepting the striving as well. Striving comes in, thoughts come in, the wanting comes in. But that's part of what is. It's nothing wrong with that. And, and I think that's a big piece of it is when the striving comes in to allow and accept the striving. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my students when I'm teaching, they, and I, I talk about mindfulness as having these three elements of intention, attention, just paying attention, and then your attitude, this non-striving, curious, kind, compassionate attitude. And some, you know, some, someone will raise their hand and say, well, I don't feel compassionate or kind right now. And it's such an important clarification that I'm not inviting them to have to feel the kindness or the compassion, but to have some spaciousness around whatever they are feeling. So there's this, this container of welcoming and inviting all of it, even when they notice the striving occurring. It doesn't mean you immediately have to let go of your striving and you know, assume the effortless, relaxed state. It's that there's some uh, the, the, the awareness that's always already here is already effortless and relaxed and that they can rest back into that and that can hold whatever their experience is even if the experience is striving. Yeah. Yeah, the way I put that sometimes it's not resisting the resistance mm -hmm. of actually accepting that and noticing it's like, oh, I'm in resistance, what's it feel like? Or, Another way of putting it is accept the non-acceptance. If I'm not accepting the moment, accept that you're not accepting the moment. It's like stepping back and bringing a, a level of just almost observation. Here I am, I'm trying, I'm resisting, I'm feeling something should be different. And just letting that be. And in, in letting that be, it tends to dissolve. If you resist it, it's that old Werner Earhart line, what you resist persists. Although sometimes what starts to happen is the mind gets tricky and it says, okay, if I just start letting go and letting this be, but secretly you're hoping that it's going to, you know, immediately yeah. poof and dissolve the thing that you're not wanting to be there. And so what will come up is, okay, I'm relaxing into the pain or I'm relaxing and letting this judgment be here and, oh crap, it's not going away, <laughs> right? But I, but I did my trick of totally accepting and allowing and so... To, it, it, you have to go to even a deeper level yeah. of really allowing, allowing even for it not to dissolve when you yes. accept it. Yeah. 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 Is there anything else we should say? I think just, just to say one thing I always say to beginners, because there may be beginners in the group here is not to get concerned about thoughts. There's an idea around in the sort of, the sort of general public that meditation is about not thinking, it's about quietening the mind. And so you shouldn't be having thoughts. If you're having thoughts, they're getting in the way of meditation. Thoughts are going to happen to all of us. I think the most advanced meditators have thoughts coming in. It's not about not having thoughts, it's about, as Shauna says, it's, it's attitude. What is your attitude to the thought? Thoughts are going to bubble up. And what the nature of thoughts are, they take us out of the moment. We start imagining something, planning something, wanting something, or start thinking about the meditation, whatever it is. The basic instruction is whenever you notice yourself thinking, whatever it might be, any thought whatsoever, any thought, <coughs> Just to let it be, not to feel you've gone wrong, to judge it and say, oh, I'm a bad boy or girl or whatever. But just gently, and we'll be doing this, just gently coming back to the experience in the moment. Just gently coming back to the experience. And the mind will wander off again. And just gently bring it back. One analogy I've heard I really like, it's like teaching a puppy to sit. You know, if you're teaching a puppy to sit, you, you, press, you press its backside down and you say sit. But you don't hold it there to make it sit. Like, this is what sitting is. You sit and you let go. And being a puppy, it's, soon it's off running around again. You say, ah, come back. This is sitting. And you just press it down gently and then let it go. 
and I think it's the same with the mind. Ah, okay, come back to here, come back to here, just sit. Just let the attention rest in the moment, and it wanders off again, just let the attention rest. And I love the puppy analogy, and I think what's so important is when the puppy wanders off, when your mind wanders off, because it will, is to notice how you bring it back, because we're training the mind in some way, and so, and this is where it's not an effortful striving and kind of whacking the puppy and saying, back, sit. Um, there is some discipline, there is some awareness that the mind has wandered, and in that moment of awareness, you're already back in the present moment. You're already, the awareness is here. So you don't have to do anything. There doesn't have to be any judgment. I noticed in myself when I would be practicing and I would notice my mind wander from the breath, which was my object of attention, there would be this, you know, damn it, Shauna, why can't you just pay attention? This isn't that hard, why can't you? And there was kind of a whacking the puppy back. And so I think our invitation is really to notice where the mind goes, again, with this light curiosity and this, and this kindness as opposed to forcing it to be a certain way. And I think that's true with everything, not just thoughts. When we hear sounds, when we feel mm. sensations in the body, when any kind of energy arises, to simply be with that experience, feel our awareness holding it. It's not so much, sometimes it's, people will say it's witnessing it, or we get a distance from our thoughts or a distance from the experience. But in my experience, there is the, the witnessing in the sense that, um, I'm not caught by it, but it's so intimate that I'm right there in my experience and that that's where the non-duality arises. That sometimes in the Vipassana practice there can be a real sense of duality of here's the witness over here and here's the experience over here. And for me what's, what's really softened is just being in the experience but not being identified or caught in it. Yeah. Sure. John. Um, I'll try to speak up something here. Um, to me, especially since you're playing with... Oh, okay. Since you're playing with this whole um, concept, if you will, of a non-dual, I guess, version of Vipassana or perspective on it, I wonder if you could comment a little bit about what certainly seems like a contradiction, and I know in my own teaching, people often experience it as this, which is it does sound like you're speaking about a kind of manipulation of the mind. This kind of training of the puppy, bringing it back, bringing it back. And, which is fine, but it does still sound like control, even if it's subtle, of experience. And I wonder if you could play a little bit with that as it relates to your own, I guess, evolving understanding of, of, of meditation. Do you want to go first? Yeah. Okay. I think it's a wonderful question, and there is that paradox that comes up of, in some ways, completely letting go of control, and in some ways, there is a certain subtle intention we have to be aware, right? To not just completely um, space out. And yet, for me, the intention is the awareness as opposed to forcing the puppy to come back to right here. So it's more of awareness watching where the mind is going as opposed to stopping my thoughts or forcing my thoughts to immediately evaporate the moment I'm aware of them. There's more, there's more gentleness in just being with the awareness. So is awareness separate from the, the moving mind? I, I would say no. Awareness isn't separate from the moving mind and I'm not trying to control the awareness but I'm trying to stay with the moving mind instead of being on automatic pilot and then being separate, I think. Yeah. yeah. Phew, I answered that one okay. <laughs> <laughs> Save me. 